Polkadot or Cosmos? Which of the two projects has more upward potential? How do they differentiate to each other? What is the core problem that they are trying to resolve? In today's video, I want to talk about exactly that and also share some insights and perspective from my experience and my research over the past few months. And if you're excited about that, then make sure that you hit up that subscribe button, like this video, share it with one or two friends on your WhatsApp, on your Instagram, on your Twitter, on your LinkedIn, and also make sure that you watch this entire thing. All right, so before we get into some numbers and comparisons here, let me give you a brief context on what the core problem um, is that Polkadot and Cosmos aim to resolve, right? And now we're talking about interoperability, right? Because I know a lot of you guys are new to crypto and it's totally fine. Welcome to the fastest growing asset class under the sun. But let me, let me give you a brief context of what interoperability and layer zero actually means, right? So think about Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? If you have one Bitcoin on the Bitcoin blockchain, there is no way that you can simply send it from the Bitcoin blockchain to the Ethereum blockchain, right? It's not compatible to each other. They cannot communicate to each other. So, and this is a big struggle and a big problem because you're actually um, not unlocking the full potential of both chains, right? And both have pros and cons, right? Both have different features, different narratives, different benefits, but you can't combine the two, right? You can't leverage their synergies, right? They're like isolated islands, right? There's no bridges in between. There's no connectivity. And this is what we call in the crypto world, in the blockchain economy, what we call layer one technology, right? Because both Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano and all these other chains, they have their own set of network validators, right? Some of them are proof of work based like Bitcoin, right? Um, or even Ethereum right now, but Ethereum is switching to proof of stake. Um, but they all have their different um, consensus rules and network validators, right? But the big problem is, like I said, they're not compatible to each other. So what do we need in order for those layer ones and everything that's in, that is on top? We're talking about decentralized applications or dApps like DeFi, NFTs, and all those applications. What do we need in order for the, all those economic activities to be connected, right? We need a base layer. We need layer zeros. And now we're talking about interoperability, right? And both Polkadot and Cosmos aim to become that interoperability layer for the Web3 era, right? And Web3 basically means the peer-to-peer -peer internet, right? Which removes middlemen and also gives back control and power to the individual, right? And creates peer-to-peer -peer networks. But those peer-to-peer -peer networks also have to be connected and compatible to each other. Now, so what is the core difference between Polkadot and Cosmos? And first off, I'm going to give you some context on Polkadot. Polkadot is obviously started by the co-founder of Ethereum, right? A very highly respected um, and smart computer scientist and programmer and developer, right? Um, Dr. Gavin Wood, he also, write the Ethereum, uh, he also wrote the Ethereum yellow paper, right? The technical paper. He's the inventor of Solidity, right? Um, and he has been one of the five co-founders of Ethereum, right? So there's not much that you need to say. Now, in 2017, 2018, he then went on to um, build his own project, right? And Polkadot is the result of that, okay? So that's why it's so hyped and that's why it's so big. And the development arm behind Polkadot is called Parity, right? So um, Dr. Gavin Wood is also the founder of Parity. And they have just built this massive, huge ecosystem over the past few years obviously around Dr. Gavin Wood, but also many other smart people in the space, right? So Polkadot is obviously a very huge project, very established, very well-funded, and extremely, extremely big. On the other hand, Cosmos is also a project that has even started years before Polkadot, right? So Cosmos is actually the big brother of Polkadot in that sense. They have had also um, very um, solid breakthroughs and technological innovations, right? Uh, when they released the first roadmap, I think in 2015 or 2016, I guess, um, and first talked about interoperability, right? And that first roadmap, that first white paper actually got entirely delivered earlier this year in 2021, right? So Cosmos is actually the first project that entirely developed and finished their original white paper, right? And the development arm behind Cosmos is called Tendermint, which is also the same name for the consensus algorithm, which they have developed, right? It's a proof of stake based 
Byzantine fault tolerant consensus algorithm. And Tenement is also one of the most adopted consensus algorithms in the entire world, right? So that's just a side thing, but it's pretty much established and being used uh, around the world. And also another comparison is that Polkadot and uh, Cosmos both have their SDK, which is fully live and fully uh, being used also by hundreds of projects around the world. Um, Polkadot calls it substrate, right? It's basically a modular framework that allows projects and developers to just use and build upon, right? And launch their blockchain very, very fast. And Cosmos calls it the Cosmos SDK. Um, and I think based on my research, the Cosmos SDK appears to be a bit more flexible because it also enables blockchains to be fully sovereign, right? Whereas on Polkadot, um, it's more connected to the Polkadot relay chain, right? So that's what we're gonna be talking about next, the architecture of both networks. So first off, you have to understand that neither Polkadot nor Cosmos aim to build just one blockchain, right? Actually, both of them try to become the internet of blockchains, right? And build a whole network of blockchains. And Polkadot resolves that and proposes a solution that is based on a relay chain, parachain architecture. Now, what does it mean? It means that there's a relay chain, right? Which is the, the heart of Polkadot, right? That's the Polkadot main chain. And through that main chain, parachains can connect and benefit from the security of that main chain, right? And in order for parachains to benefit from that security, they actually have to buy dot and lock them up and then they will become part of the security model of the relay chain in Polkadot, right? So that is one of the core um, architectural uh, designs that Polkadot here proposes. And where do, where do they stand right now? I think they, have, uh, they were supposed to launch their first parachain auctions already a few weeks or actually months ago. But so far, I think uh, it's been delayed. I think end of May, they have another uh, conference where they announce uh, upgrades and updates, and they're already preparing for the first auctions to go live. And also in that context, important to understand Kusama, which is basically the little brother of Polkadot and the public mainnet or public testnet of Polkadot. So I think the first auctions are actually going to be taking place on Kusama, right? And I know all the preparations are already in place, so that's going to come for sure. Now, on the other hand, Cosmos is not designed on a shared security model since day one. However, it is also actually designed in a very similar way, right? So you have hubs and zones in the Cosmos ecosystem, right? And you can think about hubs as airports and zones as countries, right? And the interesting thing is that the Cosmos SDK and the whole design of Cosmos and within the Cosmos ecosystem basically allows projects to be entirely sovereign, right? To have their own consensus rules, to have their own set of network validators, right? And to just be entirely independent, right? Now, that is obviously less bullish on the price of Atom because projects don't have to purchase Atom, lock them in and benefit from the Cosmos Hub security, but it allows more flexibility, right? And it's much more elastic. Now, what does that mean? That means that in the Cosmos ecosystem, projects are actually more independent and more sovereign, right? They don't, they're not forced to um, become part of the relay chain and to buy Atom and lock them up, right? And obviously as the demand grows, the prices are going to go up, right? And it's going to be much more expensive for smaller projects to become part or to even have a chance to benefit from the security of Polkadot, right? However, on Cosmos, it's much more inclusive. It's, mu it's much more open. And on top of that, since we have all seen the progress and the, the, the benefits and the success of Polkadot with their shared security approach, um, I think the Cosmos core devs have also noticed that and also put that on a roadmap to the end of the year that uh, they will also implement shared security, but it's optional, right? So projects, smaller projects especially, they now have the chance also by the end of the year to benefit from the Cosmos hub security model. And that basically means increased demand for Atom, the native coin of the Cosmos hub, right? Which is also the home of the Gravity Dex that is in the final phases of launching right now with their incentivized test, uh, testnet and trading competition right now. Um, but that's also going to come, right? And that's extremely bullish and positive for the Atom price, right? And we've seen it with Polkadot. Um, speaking of which now we've talked a lot about interoperability about layer zeros, about comparisons between both projects. Now let's look on the map. Let's look on the charts. Let's look on the hard data. And well, surprise, surprise, what we can see here is that Polkadot is currently ranked eight at a price of $40 and a market capitalization 
of nearly 40 billion with a trading volume of 3.5 billion US dollars. Whereas in comparison to that, we have to scroll a little bit down. Cosmos ranked 30, $25 with a market cap of 6.1 billion and 1.38 billion in trading volumes, right? So having that in mind, right? Having in mind that Cosmos is multiple X's smaller than dot on a, a price chart and a, and a market capitalization um, level, let's look into both of their ecosystems. And we can find the Polkadot ecosystem here on CoinMarketCap under categories and in Polkadot Eco. It has a market cap apparently of 75 billion US dollars and a trading volume of 12 billion. And obviously Polkadot is the largest one. Then you have Chainlink, but it's important to mention that Chainlink is not entirely built on um, Polkadot, right? Um, it's not a parachain on Polkadot, but they have been just using um, parts of their projects and build it on Substrate, right? So you can claim that it's a, a Polkadot project, but also kind of like not, right? Because it's also still built on Ethereum. You have obviously Kusama, um, you have Ontology, not pretty sure how they're in involved in that. Zero X, Anchor, um, Ren, Ocean Protocol, Reef, Energy Web, right? So there's a lot of um, projects here, a lot of good projects as well. But um, that's currently, according to CoinMarketCap, the value of Polkadot projects um, today, 75 billion. If we look at the Cosmos ecosystem, we can see that the market capitalization of Cosmos projects is 134.76 billion US dollars, right? Across 31 apps and services, right? And there's actually, I think, many, many, many more, right? And the first one is BNB, right? BNB is built on Cosmos, on the Cosmos SDK, and also um, implements Tendermint and is one of the largest and most successful coins out there, right? It's super huge, really, really big. Second one is also OKB, um, the OKX chain from the exchange. Um, the DEX is also pretty, pretty large already. Um, Terra, obviously, one of the largest projects in Korea. The Cosmos Hub, right, the home of Atom. Then you have Crypto.com, TorChain, uh, Qcoin, Miro, Band Protocol for Oracles, right? Kava is a DeFi project. And the list goes on. I mean, there's a lot of projects. Iris Network, I've covered this on my channel as well. Lots of lots of projects here. And this ecosystem is probably one of the most overlooked in crypto right now, right? So that's my whole point here. Um, Cosmos has a huge and very, very established ecosystem out there. It's one of the largest in the world. And it's probably um, time for the world to notice that, right? And to also price that in. So that's my two cents here. Now, before we wrap it up for today, let's look into um, coinperspective.com um, and put into context, where would Cosmos need to be and priced if it had the market cap of Polkadot, right? And we can put that here into context, Cosmos market cap in perspective to dot. If Cosmos had a Polkadot's market cap of 37 billion, one atom would be worth 178.88 US dollars, an upside of 609%, right? So currently uh, Cosmos is trading at $25, the atom coin. And if it had Polkadot's market cap, it would be at 178 US dollars, right? And I think that's actually pretty conservative considering that Dogecoin have had, can have even higher evaluations than that. And this is also one of the key messages I want to um, yeah, spread through my YouTube channel is to not just FOMO buy random stuff that's being shilled on TikTok, rather really dig deep into fundamentals, try to um, put things into perspective, into context, right? And again, Dogecoin with a market cap of more than 40 billion, um, it's absolutely, um, yeah, kind of ridiculous if you, if you put into context like what Cosmos and Polkadot are trying to build and actually are building, right? And, and there has been nearly zero development on Dogecoin over the past few years, right? Um, if we think this even further, if Cosmos had the market cap of Bitcoin, for example, one atom would be priced at 5,000 US dollars, right? So Cosmos has actually a potential of nearly 200x if it ever would reach current Bitcoin levels of $1 trillion in market value. Um, but if we think, for example, Ethereum uh, at 3.4k, right, which is still, still cheap, I would say, I think Ethereum can go to five digits sooner than later. Um, Cosmos would have an up, upside of 74x, right? Binance coin, 17x. Dogecoin, 15x, right? And um, it's, it's crazy. So I really wanted to put this into context a little bit here for you guys and also break it down. What are the core differences between Polkadot and Cosmos? And finally, well, I have actually bought a lot of DOT 
um, in late in Q4, actually, uh, right after they launched 2020. And um, I bought it very cheap at two, three dollars. And I've sold a lot of them at between 30, 35, and some of them at $40. Um, I'm still holding that, of course. I think the project is really amazing. It's going to do really, really well. But putting those two things into context, I swapped most of my DOT for Atom. And also to answer my opener here, I believe that Atom has much higher upward potential compared to DOT, but it's just my personal opinion, my personal views and perspectives, right? Do with it whatever you want, but maybe it might help you to, you know, facilitate your research and also your decision taking, right? That said, take care guys, be good, stay healthy, and I'll see you on the next one.